When one mentions country of origin labeling, the immediate association is the trade agreement of livestock between Canada and the United States. Despite having been out of effect in the cattle and hog industry since the end of 2015, the effects of cool on pork production is often overshadowed. As such, few are aware of the economic impacts this legislation had had and continue to have on the pork industry. Hopefully we are able to clarify some of the unknown aspects of the recovery of the hog market. It's important to first understand Canada is a player in the hog market. While Canada's appreciation of pork only ranks fourth in income receipts, the industry rakes in an average of $9.8 billion per year. Despite this pay, there has been a decline in Canada's pork demand over the last few years, in part because of the close competition and easy substitution with other red meats, especially beef. If that didn't provide enough of a barrier for the advancement of the business, the cold breeding swine program and the hog farm transition program were established to help hog farmers wishing to downsize, adapt to, or leave production. As a result, the pair caused a 6.3% decrease in the number of hogs within a three-year period. Before the addition of MCOOL as an industry stressor, Canada was already battling the negative connotations associated with nicknaming the H1N1 virus swine flu, which prompted decreased demand both domestically and internationally. Canadians were equally disappointed in the addition of cool legislation, mere months after the world food crisis, which saw grain prices increase and effectively increased the cost of production for pigs. In 2008, mandatory cool legislation was passed that required Canadian exports into the U.S. be labeled as such, under the notation that U.S. consumers deserve full information about the food that they purchase and eat. MCOOL between Canada and the U.S. required every pig be given a label from A to D, depending on where the animal was born, weaned, and slaughtered. This was done with the assumption that Americans would be willing to pay a premium for label A pork, which is 100% American. This is not to imply that the entirety of the American hog industry approved of MCOOL. While this is true of the northern producers, who are known to be more traditional in their production, the southern states opposed the new trade restrictions for fear of consumers choosing other easily substitutable red meats for the price increase. In fact, the opposite was predicted in that Canadian imports of hogs was expected to decrease, regardless of the U.S. hog price increase, an overall p positive view of Canada and their products. MCOOL legislation in the pork industry has some serious implications for the Canadian pork market. Country of origin labeling was introduced in the United States to increase customer awareness and support American pork products. By adding labeling that clearly outlines where the product came from, Americans now have the ability to knowingly support American pork products. By adding labeling to the production process, the price for Canadian pork will increase in the American market. Each pig carcass is capable of being cut into many byproducts. Mandatory country of origin labeling requires a system to track each of these byproducts through production and label the final product. When Canadian swine hits the American markets, they're mixed in at the slaughterhouse, making it difficult to keep them sorted. Overall, to install traceability will require high costs and the implementation of new systems to track foreign meat. Finally, because of the U.S.'s import policies on foreign livestock, Americans aren't fully capitalizing on the market demands. Without MCOOL legislation, Canadian pork producers are able to supply pork to the American markets at a discounted price, due to the value of the Canadian dollar. Allowing unrestricted trade in the pork industry would allow Canadian producers to supply pork at a lower cost, which would potentially fulfill a greater consumer demand in America. MCOOL legislation, however, effectively reduces the demand for Canadian pork products in the United States by decreasing the utility of Canadian pork products. Americans prefer to buy American and will choose to support local industry given the choice. This ability to choose reduces the quantity demanded for Canadian pork. 
Furthermore, by restricting trade with the use of MQL legislation, American pork producers are able to increase the domestic pork prices, reducing the utility consumers experience by purchasing pork products in general. It is safe to say that Canada will need to spend time rebuilding the industries most negatively affected by the cool legislations. The extra cost of labeling and separation may be abolished, but the goal to return the industry conditions before 2008 legislations. While Canada's pork and swine exports will still be able to compete with U.S. product in the United States, but without unfair bias against Canadian product, there is some damage that may never be repaired. The first year that MCOOL was mandated saw a major drop in expected profitability of Canadian farmers. Income receipts for, long, for live hog trade with the United States was expected to remain near 2008's 9.36 million, instead dropped 46.7% to 6.38 million by the end of 2009. This caused farmers to forget the profitability of the previous popular industry and pull out of the pig production. The loss of farms and near 14% decrease in production size is unlikely to be casually replaced within the next few years. Although Canada's $2.2 billion industry remains safely nestled as the fifth largest pork exporter, with a quarter of swine exports going directly to the United States, Canadian price is still mysterious given its reliance on the American dollar. For example, if the US dollar were to decrease by too much, there would be a high demand for American goods, including pork. To encourage more domestic spending, the price of Canadian pork would decrease, and producers would receive less for their efforts. Despite the clear evidence causing certain aspects of the hog market to lean towards a negative outcome or prospective gain, one portion of Canada's swine exports that remains unpredictable is the industry's impression on government intervention. Despite still having supporters to this day, the majority of producers were against MCOOL legislation. To some, this spread a message of the government being uncooperative with producers. Unfortunately, MCOOL may have affected the relations between Canada and the US and in the Paris agricultural trade relations. Throughout the seven-year battle to stabilize the North American trade agreements, the World Trade Organization ruled four times that MCOOL violated international trade agreements. The financial damage amounted to $1 billion per year for Canada. If it hadn't been for the elimination of country of origin labeling, Canada and Mexico's plan to strike back with $1 billion in fines was left redundant. While this does not necessarily ensure poor relations between Canada, Mexico, and the United States, it is unclear what will happen in the future as rumors circulate that COOL may be reinstated under America's new president. If the positive impression of Canada remains with the U.S. despite struggling trade negotiations, Canada will continue to supply wiener and feeder pigs to U.S. feeders.